make him impressive and build that sort of big side Thanks for sticking with us, guys. I am Freedom, Occupy Freedom LA. We're going to do part two of our uh, streaming teaching here, which is going to be a lot more of the how-to, so thanks for thanks for staying with us. You got get another plane. Awesome. I didn't know they were still busy here. I got this before the other oh, one did, started, okay. yeah. I'm going to get the uh, drink real quick. I'll be right back. Oh, no, thank you. I don't do bottled water. Yeah, it's I don't do single bad. plastic. I don't. I brought my own cup to fill with the uh, other water. But thank you. I appreciate the thoughtfulness. Yeah. Um, and this is our first intro meeting, so sure. feel free to be part of the discussion. Um, we're, we're basically going to be touching on the role of women in as part of the outfit. Did you know that there's, a, there's plastic the size of Texas? Rolling around the ocean? Yes, yeah, I'm and, aware. Uh, in the city of Ohio, I'm painfully we aware of that. The, uh, the plastic bag ban. The yeah, awesome. city council unanimously voted to get a plastic bag ban starts on July 1st. And then paper yeah. bags are 10 cents. And uh, so that you're encouraged to bring your own bag. <laughs> so we had a plastic bag monster in there. This dude with uh, 500 plastic bags. <laughs> I just inhaled some quinoa. I'll be okay. Oh, God. <coughs> I know the bag monster. You know the bag monster. Cool. Yep. That, so they went into the city hall meeting? They went into the awesome. city hall meeting. Yeah. Uh, that's beautiful. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm not sure how long that'll take, but I trust you to not take my camera. Because you're at all the parties I go to. <laughs> Yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm choking on quinoa. That's okay. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks for coming up. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you want to pay for your idea. You can hear me, but if you can, uh, please raise your hand. How would it go with your uh, summer? So we're about to <laughs> start part two here in a minute. Oh, there's a part two? Oh, good. Oh, yeah, we're going to do the how to next. Excellent. Yeah, we did. Um, Mic check! Can't hear him at all. Where is he holding the mic? Is it 10 feet away from his mouth? <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> He's one familiar with the uh, <laughs> way it all works. Guys! Can't hear you. Hold it closer to your mouth. There you go. There you go. Is that one of the guys you work with? Yeah. Is this a little hey, camera, um, camera you can use? Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that amazing what you can do with that? It sure is. Yeah, one of, my, oh. one of the guys I'm working with out in D.C., his name is Nate Grant. Yeah. I've been getting his video for quite a while, but it's only what he was shooting with. I was like, you got to be kidding me. It was just so, yeah, it's so good. Oh, yeah. Right here at Station 4. Oh, God. Yeah. I need to get some water. Sorry. So I need to get some water. Couple minutes, so hang tight. I didn't like working with you, Stream. Great. They're great. So if you want to fight Wall Street, fight them from your house. You're going to fight over at Station 5. 
Yeah, did you hear that they, they're giving free ad-free accounts? You heard no. him say that? I heard him say that, yeah. Good. I know they've been really good to some of the streamers that they're working with, yeah. Yeah? Cool. It makes you wonder what their business model actually is. Maybe it's like a lot of things. They're just going to get the technology out there before they start charging. I think that <laughs> the citizen uh, journalism aspect is helping to grow their business exponentially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. What's up? Um, we got the, well, I mean, the, the cops smashed my iPad, or my, not my iPad, but my iPhone. Okay. And I, you know, I, I can't buy another one. Right. I have it? the same thing. Mine got stolen. I can't buy another one. I'm using a borrowed phone that I have to give back. So. Yeah, because, I mean, I how, many times, how many times in a lifetime can you afford this, in this day and age to buy an iPhone? You know what I mean? I, like, had to sweat it for, like, I don't know how many months just to buy that one. Yep. But it was for a good cause. Um, I, I look at it that way. So we got the iPad and we're able to stream on that only at home because we don't have a hotspot for the iPad. Uh-huh. Um, I was wondering if you had any remedy for that dilemma. Um, you want to have a hotspot pretty much for streaming, just if you want it to be consistent. Talk with Guy more in detail about what's available because he has an iPad. And it's able to go hot? I don't know. You gotta talk to him. I, that's, All right. I, that's not my. Um, I don't have a lot of expertise in that area, but he might. Thank you for letting me disturb you. All You're not disturbing me at all, my friend. I love talking to you. Sky. Did you say the cops busted his eye? I'm sorry? Did you say the cops busted his eye? I think he got calmed out. But can we do it later? Because we need to teach right now. Right? We have to start session yeah, two now? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. We have, we have an audience? <laughs> I think everybody went to MIG. Yeah. We tried to do it when MIG, the MIGS meeting was not happening, but <laughs> then MIGS changed their meeting to the uh, same time after we posted. Uh, it. So. Uh, hi, this is going to be a discussion group about the environment and animals' rights. Orlando and I are going to do it. I'm going to have a team meeting. I care. Thank you. Hello, brothers and sisters. My check. My check. My check. Look here, guys. What's going on here? We want to have the uh, committee, try to form the committee of the environment. The environment is one of the things that affects everybody at the whole, at the whole level, in the whole planet. So, so it's very important for us to form this committee. Guys, we're going to get started here with our, we with our part two. We have already fighting for the environment. And we want to have our own movement and occupy our oh, environment. No so please join us. We want a young, uh, meeting over there and we want to discuss how, okay. how we can produce this. By the the frame there. Well, there you There we go. Okay. What are you doing? Live streaming how 
to class. Live streaming out to class. Starting here now. It's starting here now. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to, yeah, yeah. What is this? What is this? What is this? This magical world that we live in. She wants to know. Great. That's why she's here. Live streaming. She just got a shirt. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, okay. if you want to have a seat, we're gonna teach right now. If you want to sit down and, and learn about the computers and, and stuff like that. Learn about how to how to do like a live TV show. Fun. For all your friends. I need to get my jacket. Do you want me to take it over there? What, you think I am? I'm a little bit too much for the tree. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to stand up with a screen in. You're like, girl, bottom left one. Alright, so... Oh, look at that. Hold the phone. I'm just going to hold the phone. I am, believe me. Hold the phone. I got eight pages of notes here. That's right. Because these, 
don't really draw that much power, and it has a lot of capacity. Um, but you don't necessarily want to be lugging it around with you all the time, but it's always it's always good to have those, those uh, knowledge about what's available. The other thing that, that, um, that a lot of us use are the XCAL 18,000s, and that's an 18,000 milliamp hour. It actually has several different ports. It can actually charge laptops. Pardon me, like chat that. room. This is MacArthur USB Park, port. not Union Station. Um, I actually charge my iSound with my XCAL. Well, the downside. Downside. The downside is the cost. Those are very expensive. Of, very expensive. They're about two hundred dollars for the eighteen thousand. I found. Uh, I found those in the store over Christmas. Uh, they were going for about one hundred thirty dollars in the store, but then I found mine on Amazon.com for sixty bucks. And other people I know have gotten some for seventy, eighty, ninety. But uh, cost, you know, cost versus power. What? I got mine for thirty seven. Thirty seven. I didn't have the charger. Okay. So. Okay. That's awesome. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you want to talk about the three? Yeah. Backing up just a little bit, there's three essential components uh, to streaming, right? So the first one is power. You're going to have to have power. You could technically do it just by charging your iPhone or whatever, and you might only get about an hour out of that. So really, if you want to really be starting a channel and really be a streaming like on a regular basis, you're going to need power, so that's number one. Um, second is the transmission, which is, uh, guys can go more into detail on this, but just so you know, there's three essential com components. Power, transmission, and then the camera. So we're just going to break it down for you a little bit within those three essential components. Right. Um, the next um, transmission, There, there's a lot of different options when it comes to, to transmission. Um, but uh, the major thing that you kind of need to be aware of, especially if you're using uh, a cell phone, a smartphone device, is uh, 3G or 4G. Um, it's a question that, um, you know, partly comes down to what is available on, uh, by your carrier and what, if you ever have a device that you want to use, a smartphone that you already have that only has 3G, you can use 3G. Um, but um, it, is, it is slower. It does end up causing... Uh, what they, what they call um, compression artifacts. Basically, as you move around, it looks so pixelated because it can't keep up. And the way that, a, that uh, a lot of these streams actually end up happening is they try to send as little data as possible so it can be as fast as possible. But what you end up with in, in the situation where there's not a lot of bandwidth is, are those compression artifacts. And those artifacts can be very, very problematic if you're moving, moving your camera around. You can't really clearly see what's happening. Um, and um, you usually also have to deal with um, 3G networks are larger, uh, the coverage is larger than 4G networks, so it's one thing sometimes you're in an area that doesn't have 4G, you're going to go to 3G, or if you're 4G only in some cases, you're going to lose coverage. Um, so uh, another thing that's important to know about coverage is the fact, um, the fact that different providers have different coverage. So AT&T has different coverage than Verizon, has different coverage than... Um, than Sprint, and um, it's useful to know where those areas are and what you can get, and to possibly have overlap if you can afford it um, with um, uh, hotspots or uh, those those sorts of things that you can connect to by Wi-Fi. Um, Another thing that's also useful to note in the transmission is spectrum saturation. Basically, it's a radio. Whenever you're doing 3G or 4G, it's a radio. It's, a lot of people are using that radio. It's either harder to, to uh, get good signal sometimes, and sometimes it's hard to actually get good data transfer. So um, if a lot of people are, let's say, at the Rose Bowl Parade, streaming from the stands to home, you may have a hard time broadcasting, and that's what we experienced, actually. All of us streamers had problems on that day um, in any sort of similar situation. It can sometimes be a problem. Um, another thing is reliability, that um, anything that um, interferes with, with the reliability of your transmission is going to cause it a problem. A problem. Sometimes that just means that um, you, you, know, you don't want to necessarily try to stream in a parking garage because you're never going to get um, a transmission from there. But sometimes it's a little bit more insidious. Sometimes if you're, let's say, on F29 outside Walmart, there's a block where there's no coverage. Just a block. Yeah, yeah, you find that out very quickly. It was so, um, 
you know, so that's something to be aware of. Um, sometimes you can get around that by having um, redundancy. And uh, redundancy is basically having multiple options, um, either if something goes down because of uh, hardware problems or because um, you need sort of uh, an overlap. So let's say AT&T and Verizon hot spot, something like that, if you have lots of money. Well, I mean, my, my setup is I have AT&T as my service provider. But I have my hotspot is um, Verizon 4G. So if one goes down, I have the other service. And I have a clear wire hotspot that I can get on, which has different coverage than my Verizon as well. Um, so um, the third component is camera. Now, I, we say camera instead of smartphone because you, know, there are, you don't have to use a smartphone. You can use a nice prosumer camera with a Teradek Q and have it broadcast to live stream directly. You could do that if you had thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, so there's nothing that's keeping you from doing that except maybe three components, transmission, um, uh, camera, that would be, and uh, power, because these bigger cameras can take more power. Um, uh, one thing that you also have to be aware of is your video resolution, and so different, different smartphones have different video resolutions. Some of them can broadcast in 1080p, um, whatever it is, 7, 720p, I believe it is, um, and, um, and you're going to be limited by that. If it's on the low end, you're going to be limited to that. But another side of that is what can the streaming application do? Now, Ustream um, works very, very well with the iPhone, um, the, iP the iPod Touch, uh, the fourth four generation iPod Touch, and with the iPad 4. Um, Bella Echo uses the iPad 4. Um, and it works great. It works great with those. It doesn't work as well with um, with Android-based devices, especially tablets, because they don't they don't have the software designed for it. So sometimes you're not just limited by the actual physical capabilities of the device, but the capabilities of the software you're using to stream something. Um, also, uh, one thing that you need to keep in mind is the low light ability. Some some cameras do really well in low light. Some don't. Um, and some of them get that at a cost. Sometimes it's that they lower the frame rate slightly, so it's a little bit more uh, uh, jumpy, I guess is the word, but you can see versus not necessarily being able to see, it, then it doesn't really matter. Um, so that's something to also be aware of. Most of your new, your new devices have pretty good low light capability. So it's, uh, if it's a new device, you're, you're probably okay with that. But as it stands now, the, uh, correct me if you, if you disagree, tell me, but uh, the iPhone seems to have a better aperture, a wider aperture. So in low light situations, like I can, I can shoot GA with an uh, iPhone and just have it look really bright. Uh, whereas when I was filming the same GA with the Samsung Galaxy, the Galaxy 2 that I had before the iPhone, it's a lot darker, a lot cooler. It's a very different look. So look at people's different streams, figure out what looks that you like, ask them what they're using. But I think it's, it's, it's pretty much agreed on that the iPhone 4S is pretty much the best option available right now in terms of uh, the crispness, um, the continuous, the continual frame, and the light, and it's, it's pretty much the best option available yes. at the moment. Yes. But the technology, as you know, transformed by the second, you know, and evolved by the second. As soon as Ustream has better codecs available for Android, Android will be a very good option. Um, or if someone else comes up with something better. Um, so, the next one um, is sort of the how-to. Yeah, I mean, are you, how many of you are already streaming? <laughs> right now, stream everything. Stream everything. So, are you streaming or recording? Yeah. Streaming. Streaming? I've been having trouble. I have an Android. Okay. Uh, okay, so you're you streaming. You streaming, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't have any viewers. Okay. So well, that's you have a Twitter account. Do you have a yes, Twitter? Yes, I have a Twitter account. Okay. So I forgot the password. We want to do more. Of, well, I, at some point, we're going to have to talk about more about how to promote yourself so that you can get a bigger audience. That's a that's kind of a, a longer conversation, and I'm, I'm happy to do some one-on-one -on -one conversations with people later if you have specific questions. But um, for anybody that's interested in, in starting a stream or learning, it's it's, it's very user-friendly for the most part. And like Sky said, um, the the app for the Apple for the iPhone is actually a lot more interactive and. Uh, than it is for the Android, you actually have more features. So the app is really simple, it's free, you just download it, it's called Ustream. Um, they have a great back end where you can... 
yourself, obviously. And so you need to know how far you're going to be walking on foot if you're going to be following the march. It's very different than covering something like a GA, a press conference, something like that. Just doing interviews in a single location doesn't necessarily, you can have more equipment there and it doesn't necessarily uh, cause the same kind of uh, problems and mobility. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, it's useful to know about whether or not you're going to be on restricted property. Anything that's private property um, um, might have uh, different different considerations um, if you're if you're if you're moving uh, around in private property. You may not be able to speak for very very long because they close the stop screening and then you know call police and whatnot. Whether it's, so if you're in public, um, it's essentially anything goes as far as screening, pretty much. Um, and then that takes it into safety. Yeah, so safety um, and just personal preparedness, things that you want to think about in advance to going out on, um, on location. Um, eye protection, <laughs> helmet, gas mask, depending on what region you are in, maybe a bulletproof vest. Uh, first aid kit, uh, you talked a little bit earlier about working in partners and teams. Um, and then there, there's a really great safety guide, especially if you're going to be traveling around and in different places in the world, if there's conflict, I mean, this is a little bit outside of occupied, potentially, but uh, there's some great resources. Um, uh, uh, Committee to Protect Journalists is a, is a really awesome organization to know about. They have a lot of great documents that they've created. A lot of, it's a great resource for information. Um, and then think about your wardrobe, your food and water. Um, try to use the restroom before you leave. You know, like F29 was a good example of that. There were no restrooms. I drank, you know, a lot of water and coffee, and it was an issue. So, you know, think about it. You want to take care of your body and stay hydrated, but just think about when your next week's going to be able to stop the stream and go to the bathroom. <laughs> In Oakland, I, I took, actually took the stream into the bathroom and had somebody else hold it. The chat room was like, it's you stream, not peace stream. Like, it was funny. Oh. But think about it, you know, like, try to get somebody to baby do the stream for you. And, you know, like, you got to, working in teams is really one of the key things, like having friends that, that can help. So that you don't have to turn it off because when you turn it off, you lose viewers. People, you know, they go into something else. So try to keep it, you know, rolling as long as you can, uh, and just and just being prepared um, with all of those thoughts. Uh, I was regretting not having a gas mask when I was in Oakland, uh, and one of my viewers donated one to me after that because she saw me running around with like a vinegar rag, and then like the next day she sent me a gas mask. So you know, your viewers, it's really nice. A lot of viewers do kind of raise up to support you. Which is, one thing that we learned in Oakland, which I never even thought of to think about, um, is that um, litter um, apparently helps with the pores on, uh, pores on your skin with the tear gas. Um, bizarre thing, even having shown. No, no, it's not. No, no. One of the, uh, no, it's not. Um, someone had someone had a um, and some of the thick glitter on on a rag and actually said that it helped almost as much as the vinegar. Um, no, it's one bizarre. Part, yeah. So it's it's bizarre. It's bizarre. <laughs> it's bizarre. It might need further vetting. We were joking about it. We were joking. I, I know someone who was actually using it. Here, yeah. I know, but it apparently but I does. Always consider apparently, that no, it apparently does. <laughs> okay. In certain circumstances. Um, I, so technically, Later. we're supposed to be done now. But we're not. Uh, we're sticking on par with the timing of today, which doesn't seem to be the case. Um, can we? I, let's skip that. Yeah, let's skip that. If anybody wants to talk about equipment or technical stuff, talk to this guy. He's one of the. the he's, he's, you know, admittedly a robot and a techie, so he can help you with that stuff much better than I can. Skyboard. Um, <laughs> Skyboard. Yeah, Skynet. Hashtag Skyboard. Um, Skyboard. Also, the hashtag Twitter. But let's go into uh, best practices. So we've just created a list of some of the things that you want to be aware of and be thinking about best practices. Um, you are, like I, I said earlier, you always want to announce live, and especially to your social network, uh, that you're going live. Uh, you stream. You can send an email events at ustream.tv and let them know that you're going. If you're, uh, you have events coming up or if you're going live, and uh, depending on what their news day looks like, they may uh, be able to help promote your channel, which is huge. Like when that happens, you just watch the numbers, and it's like a, you know somebody's doing something because the numbers just start just jumping up, and suddenly you have to go from 20 to 400 people. You know, um, so that's something to know. Uh, you a really important 
You want to turn off the extra features on your phone. If you have a bunch of apps running, you want to close down everything you don't need to extend your battery life. And one of the most important things that you do is you, uh, if you're on an iPhone, put on your call forwarding so that the phone doesn't ring because that will shut your stream down. And it seems to happen at the most inopportune time. I missed the arrest on App 29 because I had changed phones because I was having trouble with one of them and I had my backup and I didn't have time to put the call forwarding on. Of course, the arrest, the guys down on the ground, there's six cops on and my phone rings and I, I missed the whole thing. So, very important to put your call forwarding on or on the Android, the Android some, it's a different. Sometimes you have the option on Android to actually do the settings depending on, on the exact um, model and, and all of that. Sometimes you don't, and there are some apps out there, the one that comes to mind that I use is Mr. Number, where you can actually tell it to automatically dump the voicemail or something like that, so it won't interrupt your phone. And to reiterate, it's very, very important to take care of this before going out, because even, even if it's just that randomly that someone might interrupt, but oftentimes if folks know that you're out covering something like a protest, they're going to call to see if you're safe. <laughs> and they're going to call to see where you're safe because they know things are going to be going down, and they call at the exact moment that those things are happening. Yeah. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Yeah. Text usually can come in and not interrupt, and but... but <laughs> In my case on grade night, I had not turned off the... I had, I had just been starting. I mean, I had, I'd only been streaming like two weeks, and I didn't know how to turn off the sound effects. So if you listen to my footage from grade night, you'll hear my text going off all night long. Luckily, it was a, a cute little whistle sound. Like, people were going crazy, like 15,000 people watching from around the world. What is that sound? And you want to try to, you know, troubleshoot and learn all this stuff before you go out and you're really in the middle of an action, and that's like bringing down the quality of what you're delivering, you know, with the stream. So on iPhones, it's call forwarding. You want to forward it to some other number. Um, turn off the sound notifications. Notify your moderators if you can. Get to people in advance so that they can be troll playing while you're out there. Uh, it's much better to tell people, you know, have a handful of people so that, you know, hopefully somebody's available while you're out on actions and let them know in advance if you can. Certainly notify them when you're going live. Uh, and then uh, what I like to do when I come on live, like I said earlier, is to identify where you are, introduce yourself, identify where you are, what the action is, the time, the day, the location, street name, very specific if you can. It just helps to make it like an actual document of, uh, of everything that's happening. And then um, I like to narrate the stream a lot. I, I, you know, a lot of people, some of the streams I watch, people are quiet. I mean, we all are going to find our own voice and do it in our own way. I, see, I find that people tend to appreciate when we're narrating. I find if I'm watching a stream and somebody's just walking around and not talking and not watching the chat stream, it's kind of frustrating because you're like, they walk by a sign and they're like, where's the sign? And they don't read it because you can't, you know, read the signs for people. Tell them where you are. Tell them what's going on. If there's a lull in the action, do a recap for people. Tell them, okay, we're here now. We just had a toe to toe with the cops. That's calmed down for the moment. We're hanging out. We're going to see how the rest of the day goes. So just keep people informed of what's going on. A lot of the times the chat room, you know, you get a lot of loyal people that hang out in the chat room who will tell other people, answer questions, and help you out. But pay attention to the chat, too, because people, this is, just, again, going back to it, this is a big part of the um, interactive experience is, is interacting with that chat room, answering questions for people, and it, it, it just helps keep people um, engaged and interested. Um, and another piece of that is... Um, well, you want to assess the crowd size because one of the most uh, common questions from people is how many people are there. So that's something that you can talk about too that people seem to be interested in. Um, the, uh, another, another thing, and I addressed this a little bit earlier, I guess, um, was is to, on, on 3G especially, to make sure that you shoot steady. Um, but it's also important with 4G. Make sure that you shoot steady. If you're doing this with your with your phone, your camera, people are still not going to be able to see what's happening. Um, so it it is very useful. Um, there's several different types of grips that I've seen people use to, to hold devices. I use that grip actually. Um, you know, just being able to hold them in very ways, in various ways that you can stabilize them, that you can hand them easily with one hand. That's sometimes very useful. Using two hands is sometimes very useful. But make sure that you are able to make that clear, steady, 
but especially the 3D because it'll have those, those artifacts. Okay, okay. You skip to where? Okay, quick version. Okay, um, you already, we already talked about setting with a monopod or tripod mount. Um, um, when there's any sensitive info that's being shared, like your phone number, make sure you hit the mute button, because otherwise you'll end up like Tim Pool having to you get your, your phone number replaced multiple times, um, which happened during Zuccotti. Yeah, uh, so somebody, somebody's exchanging, if anybody's exchanging phone numbers or you know, sensitive contact information, there is a very simple, clear, identifiable mute button on the Newstream app. You can just hit it, share the information, and then you know come back to the radio probably want to um, refrain from identi uh, identifying people who want to be anonymous by name. We already touched on that. Um, calling out the badges of officers that are committing misconduct because it's not going to show up um, it's not going to show up on, on the, the camera, probably. So if you want to make sure that that information is there on record somewhere, you really need to call it out um, for the most part. Um, if, uh, okay, if your goal is to report an event, you're going to not need. You're going to have to refrain from protesting while streaming because otherwise it's going to possibly get you arrested. Um, and you can focus on narrating, describing what's happening, um, and, and have that be how you are getting things out to the rest of the world. Um, another one is to um, consider if you want to be on camera or not. And we touched on this a little bit earlier about you know you might want to be on there to, to connect with your audience, just to have a sort of personal connection with your audience, and that goes a long way in this medium. Um, but sometimes if you want to protect your identity, you're going to want to keep you know you're going to clearly want to keep um, your face off camera. But you should consider both of them um, when you're when you're doing this. Um, we already talked about restarting the stream under the two-hour mark um, and highlighting the clips. Um, and, but you also should uh, clean up anything that's broken that's on the back end. Sometimes with the stream, you end up with these little audio-only files. Basically, it ends up cutting cutting just uh, the video portion and it's just recording audio. Which happens to be at low bandwidth a lot of the time. A lot of the time. Um, sometimes there's, another, there's other glitches that cause it, but um, those things, you're going to want to get rid of them as soon as you can because they take up a lot of time and a lot of space visually on the interface. And also there's occasionally you'll have damaged clips that are like three second clips that you can't possibly use. Sometimes you can still highlight on the back end and actually use some of it, but if you can't, get rid of it. Okay? Or at the very least, make it not visible to everybody yeah. because it causes problems when you're trying to maintain stuff later. That's right. So to, to expand on that a little bit, when you're done, when you can get yourself back to a computer, because you can't really do it effectively from your phone, but when you can actually get yourself to an actual computer, you want to go into the back end, you want to sort through, you want to edit, you want to go ahead and name, because a lot of the times, it, mine saves two of everything. So I'll name the clip when I'm done with it, and I blast it out to my social network, and it will also automatically auto-save an exact duplicate. So I like to go through, and usually by the time I get to it, both of them have some views. I try to get rid of the one that has less views, I just delete it, and then the one that has more views, I'll name it, and I'll, I'll describe what it is. A lot of times I do the hashtag, if it's F29, if it's J28, so people that are looking for that uh, can find it. You know, keep it organized so that people going to the computer archive can actually find what they're looking for, not wasting time trying to open something and, and watch something that's two or three seconds long, which is the buzz that seems to have. But it, it, it's quite frequent. It happens a lot. There's a lot of garbage in your stream, especially if it's, your stream's been dropping because of signal connections and you've been on and off. And for one day of action, you might have 20 different clips. It's not just one long continuous already named by itself. There actually, it does require editing and maintenance on the back end, so know that. And, and if you want to, you know, be an effective voice for the movement, you you got to maintain that and make it easy for your viewers to come there and, you know, to, to find the information that they're looking for easily. Okay. Um, also, we have sort of a recommended toolkit um, for those three things that we were talking about earlier, power, transmission, camera, and then a few other little things along the way. Some of them we've already mentioned. For power, um, we both recommend um, the iSound um, 16,000, uh, or the iSound 16,000 milliamp hours. And it's got those USB ports. You can sometimes have multiple devices plug into it. And then it, this one right here, yep, yep, right here, this right here. Um, it's got those five ports on it. 
Um, I'm using some of them right now. Some, some of them. That's a battery pack. It's a battery pack. And then moving on to um, the Energizer. This is actually why I brought a lot of my stuff with me, though I'm not pulling it all out. This is the Energizer X Pal on um, 18,000. Um, it, um, like I said, it has it has um, a few different ports here. I actually have the USB port taped over right now. But um, it has also a bunch of different ends to charge different devices. Like I said, I don't have a charger for my iSound. I actually charge my iSound with my x using one of the adapters that comes with it. So, um, so that's one of the advantages of this is it can plug into lots of different types of devices, not just USB devices. And it has different voltage ranges. So things that are um, DC uh, current 9 through uh, 12 volts is this port here. There's another 16 through 20. And there's another one that's um, the, the 5 volt. Um, and that means a lot more if you're dealing with the technical specs of these devices. But um, it's important to know. Um, and then the transmission. You've got hotspots. Um, my hotspots right here, I have it... Um, I have it uh, um, velcroed to my iSound just to keep them together, and so I can charge it when I want to. Um, but it, it has a little interface here. You can't really see it that well, um, but um, it, uh, it works pretty well. It's got an unlimited data plan, and it's got pretty good coverage. But then also you have things like the Verizon hotspot. Um, I don't believe they have unlimited data plan. Right. But um, yeah. your spot has unlimited data, and it, a hotspot becomes really essential when you're in places. A lot of the places that we stream are like downtown, right, in the middle, middle of a bunch of big stone buildings. It's, that's crappy the signal. When I was at Ducati Park, I could barely connect, even with my hotspot. Downtown LA, MacArthur Park. Where, forget it. You don't have a hotspot, you can barely connect. It's just my experience. Yeah, it's very spotty. So if you're going to be shooting protests, and a lot of them are happening, you know, downtown's in big government building areas, you want to be having a, a, a hotspot of some sort in order to get a signal or to improve the signal, you know, that you that you can get there. It really, it makes, it's, it's life or death. I mean, I have, when my hotspot was down, I couldn't even go to an action because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get it. You know, I had other editing work I needed to do. Because so I just know. So it's, it's, hot spot is really critical. Cool. Yeah. Clear spot. The Energizer is a battery pack. Okay, battery the battery. clear wire um, that I have velcroed to the iSound is uh, on that. Um, oftentimes, the, be the better devices are the newer devices. So um, if you can upgrade, it's sometimes a, a good time to do that. Um, also, a tripod mount or monopod. Um, are very, very, very important. Or a tripod mount, you have to have something to actually mount your camera because they don't usually mount to traditional tripods. Um, so something that's custom like that. There's a few products like um, the eye stabilizer, which is fairly generic and clips around phones. I don't have one to show you right now. Um, or something custom like that. Like that. Um, a monopod or tripod to connect it to for stabilization. A light, and I have one that I can show a little bit later, but any kind of light or low light situation, sometimes the low light capabilities are still not enough to do certain things, and sometimes you need a light for that. You can use the built-in function um, on, a, on, on Ustream to actually illuminate sometimes by hitting settings and then actually hitting the light. And the flash, it drains batteries very quickly, um, so it's sometimes better to have an external light, but if that light goes off, you're not going to have as much light, but it's not going to kill the screen. Um, um, LED light, yeah. And I can show you that later. Um, microphone, um, an external microphone is sometimes used for the half or extra audio coverage. I use a um, Audio Technica um, that actually with a custom adapter that I, that I put together that I can show later um, to connect um, to the port. It's a four conductor um, mic headset port. It's not like um, a regular microphone. Um, like I have, I, I have, yeah, I have, I have a boom that's made out of a neighbor's pole with a, a, a few little things, we'll talk about it um, later, but um, you can use that to actually get those business cards out. I don't usually have them, and it's always been a problem. Um, uh, notebook and pen is very useful to be able to take down those if you don't have uh, digital devices or if power goes down, you still have those notes. And that's, uh, that pretty much wraps up. Do you guys have any questions anymore? Okay. Go for it.
watch your back. I mean, there's some people that don't want to be on film. You know, I had some situations where I called people out for doing things that they got upset about. And, you know, that could have been why I was targeted and had my ear taken away, you know, my phone grabbed for me, too. So, again, you just want to, as much as you can, work with the body and have somebody watch your back. And you just never know where, you know, I just have two kind of dumb questions. Like, um, there are no dumb questions. <laughs> hey, uh, can you download footage from the Ustream site to edit later? You yes. can, yes. Yeah. You can also upload it to uh, YouTube. It actually has a function to be able to upload it to YouTube. Under all of them. Under all of them. But um, you can download it. Um, as, uh, I think it's an FLV to a flash file, and then you can then, uh, yeah, this is it. the way to refute a refute trip, is that not only are you live streaming, you're also archiving, and it's stored on their server. Yeah. So that's one of the things you can, at least in both things, documentaries with all the things that we have archived there. And, oh, and another, another no. follow-up with that is, uh, is that oh, you, uh, but it has a lot of work. It does have a lot of work. And can you shoot from an iPad? Yes. That's what I can do. And it has very good video quality. Or can. Any other questions? Yes. The iPhone is better than Android? Um, with Ustream, right now, yes. Um, Okay, yeah, that's a little bit of a too. Um, um, is Android or is, is iPhone better than Android was the, the question. And for Ustream right now, the answer is yes. And the reason is because there's sort of a one-size-fits-all video codec. It's basically a video codec takes the raw video and it compresses it. And it, um, when it's sent over um, to the Internet, um, it, you know, it's it sort of decompressed, basically, eventually. Um, and that's what you see. Now, the one that's on Android does not cover all of the range of high-end cameras that are available on the Android platform. The, the iPhone is a single platform, and they, they do develop very very closely with that platform, so the quality is pretty high. Um, it's just a matter of them upgrading the, the codecs on the Ustream app or having another, something else come along later that, that, that takes, takes uh, use of that. Any other questions? Call forwarding. Call forwarding. Um, on, on the iPhone, it's under the phone setting. You want to turn call forwarding on. You don't have to forward it to, fortunately, in my case, I have a second phone number. I forward it to my alternate phone so I can still use the call when I'm out of the field. If you have a home phone or something, if you don't have another number, I, and, and in terms of iPhone right now, I don't I don't know if there is an app for iPhone right now, but right now there does exist an app on Android called Mr. Number where you can forward it, so you can basically, it intercepts the call before it actually rings your phone and sends it directly to uh, voicemail. I don't know if something exists for iPhone. You can get a free number from you now. You can use that. You can probably yeah, yeah. use a, a, a number of your Skype. Yeah, I get a Skype number. If I saw it, get free access count to send it over there somewhere and forward it.
Okay, guys, I hope that the sound was okay. I'm a little concerned that maybe you didn't have a, a good enough sound, but thanks everybody for watching. Um, I'm just going to tune in here and say goodbye. I just want to say hi. Thanks for tuning in on Freedom, OccupyFreedomLA.org is my website, and FrostExpones.com uh, is Guy's website. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you could hear and that you actually learned something. Uh, we're all about trying to teach everybody and empower um, an entire army of citizen journalists out there in the field. So thanks for tuning in today. Uh, hopefully I'll go back live in a few minutes and continue the story of this Inner Occupy SoCal conference we got going on here today. Hosted by Occupy LA, we are in MacArthur Square Park. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.